Hello, Pastor Brian here. I've uh, been looking at a judgment, a judgment that all Christians will have to face. It's called in Scripture the judgment seat of Christ. And we read of it in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, where we're told, for we, that's us believers, must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So the Christians will stand before uh, Christ in, at, at their judgment seat. Now, understand, and we looked at this last time, that uh, it will not be a judgment of our sins or for, because of our sins. Our sins were paid for completely at Calvary, and they have been washed away. So it's not a judgment about sin, but it's a judgment of our works as a Christian, whether he says whether they are good or bad. And I'd like to take a look at, at the good and the bad. We read of the judgment seat and what it's going to be like in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, I'm going to read verse 11 to 15. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. It's a foundation on which our works will be built on. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, and precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it because it'll be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on in, endures, he will receive a reward. There it is. The judgment seat of Christ is for rewards, not, not sin. But he goes on, if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss but he himself will be saved yet so as through fire. So these are works that are built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. The only works that are going to count for any, anything eternally are, are those that are, that are built on that foundation uh, out of our Christian works, I know, our good deeds, things that are done because we're a Christian, done for the church, done for one another, done in his name. Any giving and, and serving and, and ministering, uh, anything will be rewarded on that day. Jesus told his disciples, you can't give a glass of cold water to somebody who's thirsty in the name of a believer that won't be rewarded on that day. And here he's talking about our eternal rewards. These are what he describes in Matthew 6 as treasures in heaven, those, those eternal rewards. And they fall into two general categories here. He, those which are gold, silver, and precious stones, and then those that are wood, hay, and straw. And the judgment is described this way. They're going to be put to the flame. And the first group obviously survives the flames, the gold, silver, and precious stones. But the second group, wood, hay, and straw, just burns to ashes. And the point is that we will be rewarded for anything, any, everything and anything that survives those flames. So I'd like to take a look now at, at what the, the, the wood, hay, and straw represents, because there are things built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. These, I guess you could describe as when he said, whether good or bad, these are, are, the, are the bad, as it were, good works. They don't qualify for a reward. What are they? And I think we get an idea what they are by the, but the nature of the materials that are used. He said wood. You know, scripturally, wood symbolizes our, our humanity our humanness. It speaks of that which is of human endeavor and, and depends on our human ability, that are, that are things that are attempted in the strength of our own flesh. Uh, we think so little of God's work that, um, that we, uh, we attempt to do it with our own human skill and human energy and, and human power rather than depending on God, because it's God's work. You know, Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. 
He who abides in me bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. And, and this wood attitude is, oh yeah, yeah, just watch me. Watch what I can do for you, Lord. Wood, wood. It describes just careless works because we don't think enough of God's work that this is God's work, that we think we'll just do it in our own strength, our own flesh, in our own way, you know, rather than complete dependence upon Him. So, so that's, that's the wood. Now, the hay, I think, speaks of worthless service. In other words, something that's very showy. It's done only because it's convenient. There's no sacrifice involved. Jesus told the story of the widow's might, you know, the people coming into the temple and making their donations to the temple and rich people were coming, you know, and, and making a big show of all that they were giving and people were impressed and everything. And then a little widow came and all she had was a little mite. That would be worth less than a penny. And she put that in. And Jesus told his disciples, you see that widow there that put that little mite in there? She gave more than all those rich people gave because they gave out of their abundance, their, their, their overflow. She gave out of her very necessity. You know, it reminds me of uh, David when uh, in, in 2 Samuel, uh, you know, there was a terrible plague hitting Israel and Dave went up on uh, this, this hill outside of Jerusalem uh, where eventually the temple would be built and was making a sacrifice to God that he would stop the plague. And a fella, you know, owned the, uh, th that field. And David said, I, I, I wanna uh, purchase, you know, uh, the bull and, and, and the, the everything needed to, to make this sacrifice. And the guy just loved David. Oh, no, no, man, I'm gonna give it to you. Go ahead and do it. You got it, it's, you know. David made this comment. Then the king said to Arana, no, but I will surely buy it for a price, nor will I offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God, with which cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. He wasn't going to make an offering to God that would, wasn't costing him anything. You know, I think Hay describes uh, giving the leftovers and not to re giving God the best. There's a story about a, a farmer who uh, was raising cattle and, and one of the cows had twins and he was so excited, so excited. He told his wife, I'm so excited. Twins, I can't believe it. I'm Right now, I'm dedicating one of them to the Lord and the other will be ours. But one of those is the Lord's. And so I thought, oh, that's wonderful, wonderful. Which one is gonna be the Lord? He says, well, I'll decide. And so every now and then, as the, as, the, as the little calves were beginning to grow, she would ask, have you decided which one's going to be the Lord's? And he said, no, not yet, but I will. After a while, he came in very dejectedly to his wife, and he said, oh, oh I've got bad news. She said, well, what happened? Uh, the Lord's calf died. <laughs> Isn't that human nature? That's hay, you know, the leftovers. And then there is straw. I think straw speaks of useless service. It's selfish with, with a base motive. In, in the end, it's done for personal gain. In other words, it's doing something that uh, you're doing it actually for the prestige involved in doing it. Maybe with a recognition. You, you, you just really do it for the recognition or maybe even greed. What, the, the spirit of it is what's in it for me. What am I gonna get out of this for myself? It may be a good thing but totally wrong heart, wrong motive. You know, ministers and pastors and missionaries can be just as guilty of this as anyone else, doing a good work with the wrong motives. Jesus told his disciples in Matthew chapter six, verse one to four, take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise you have no reward from your father in heaven. There it is. 
Therefore, when you do charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets. They may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. It's like Jesus is saying, okay, people are applauding, people are lauding. (laughs) There's your reward. Enjoy it. That's all there is. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, that your Father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. These are the kinds of works where you're drawing attention to yourself, you know, and you're, you, you're relishing that. And, and you know, we all kind of have that desire in us. We, we, we like that recognition and that attention. And I think that's why he says, don't even let your, your, your left hand do what your right hand is doing. You know, just just do it quietly. Do it, don't don't sound a trumpet. Don't say, "Oh, look what I did." You know, just do it as unto the Lord. Straw demands some sort of recognition, uh, some sort of earthly reward. You know, for doing it. He said, "Attitude is, you know, no one seems to notice. No one seems to care. I don't even know why I'm doing this." That's that's straw, and the result of a wood, hay, straw, ministry. He says in verse 15 there in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, if anyone's work is burned, there it is, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet so as through fire. All those works burn. That ministry, that service for the Lord is no service at all for the Lord. He says there the result of that, that person will suffer loss. Well, well, what loss? There will be no reward for that service. And he sees at that point what could have been and, and didn't happen. And instead, that's just shame, you know? It's, uh, this is how I invested my life in eternity. I, one person put it this way. What a dreadful experience it'll be to see one's so-called service for God go up in flames and then to have the unutterable shame of picking up the charred embers of a careless, worthless, and useless life and pressing them into the pierced hands of the master. Ooh, I'm confident for virtually all of us believers, there will be gold and silver and precious stones in there, but apparently there may be some that there isn't. And it all burns up. Oh, they're saved, but oh, what loss. So we have an admonition from the Lord. You know, in 1 John 2, 28, and now little children abide in him, in Christ that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Amen. John 15, 5, I quoted earlier, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. There it is. For without me, you can do nothing. And then as Jesus said in Matthew 6, 19 to 21, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Don't let that be your focus. Just building up your treasures on earth. That's where moth and rust destroy and thieves can break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys or where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You know, uh, I believe when we're at that judgment seat, there's going to be a lot of surprises. Surprised at what we receive and, 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 and for what? And surprised, who gets the great rewards and, 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 and who doesn't? I think that brings us to what does the gold and silver and precious stones represent? And I want to look at that next time. But in the meantime, I'd leave us all with uh, the words of the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. You know, just do not be conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the will of what the will of God is that which is good and acceptable and perfect you know uh, it's sort of like oh lord take this body and take this day and your will be done ah uh, you know what hmm. abide in him and he in you our lord jesus christ and see what he desires to do and what he can do. And it's all for him and for his glory. But we get the blessings. God bless. Have a good day with the Lord, in the Lord. Talk to you later. My Savior, my Jesus, true to his word.